So this is the British phonemic chart. There is also one available for American English. So if you're curious to know about that, then you can go and look at that because it's a slightly different chart. There are a couple of vowels that are a bit different. So this covers what are called your monophthongs. Okay, these are vowel sounds that are just one sound. You have your diphthongs or diphthongs, okay? Two different ways to pronounce them. These are where you have two vowel sounds together in the same syllable, okay? You can see the examples. And then at the bottom, you can see that we have the consonant sounds. If you'd like a copy of this chart, I do have the link for it down below in the description. It's completely free. You don't need an email address or anything. Go and download it and have fun. <laughs> There's also two different versions. There is a nice and easy black and white printable version if you want to print it and put it on your wall, or there's a beautiful colored version for you. So let's start up in this top left hand corner. We have the monophthongs. So we'll go through the pronunciation of each one and then we'll go through the words. We're not going to spend much time on this because it's not necessarily a pronunciation lesson today. It's a transcription lesson. So if you want to learn how to pronounce the sounds in more detail, I have plenty of videos about those on my channel and I will link them in the description later. Okay. So let's start here. Firstly, we have E, please. I, pin. O, look, o, boot, e, bed, a, teacher. So this first sound is e, the second sound is a. A, bird, o, court, a, cat, a. Up, ah, car, or lock. So those are our monophthongs or monothongs, as some people call them. Now for the diphthongs, we have. If I move these over a little bit. Ear, beer, a, day, ur, tour. Oi, boy, o, no, air, care, I, my, ow, cow. Now, what you will hear with some speakers is instead of using ur for tour, sure, poor, etc., you might hear speakers using this one more, this or sound, and saying tall, sure, and so on. Cure. Is there a cure? Is there a cure? Now a lot of speakers move more towards this one. This one here as well, you might hear a lot of speakers, instead of saying care, air, they may pronounce it just as this air over here as in bed. So they pronounce it as a longer version. They don't say ke, okay? It's not short. They make it longer. So you have ke, and then this one, if we make it longer, ke, ke. So that's that. This one as well over here, now I pronounced it the way you will hear it in received pronunciation. However, if you hear most speakers in the UK, particularly modern received pronunciation users and speakers, you may hear them instead of saying O, oh, they may say O. Oh. So it changes from an A uh to an O, oh, that starting vowel. O, oh, O. Oh. So yes, something to be aware of. Now the consonant sounds, let's go through those together. Starting with our first one here, p, pot, b, 
but t t d dog ch cheese j judge so it has it twice here j j the start and the beginning start and the end judge k calm g go whoops f funny v van think v this s see z zoo sh she j vision m mine n no Oh, it's now, sorry. <laughs> that was no. <laughs> now. Mm, king. <sighs> Hurry. L love. R ready. W water. Y yes. Now, one thing you will notice about this chart is that particularly with the consonant section, some of the letters are in this black and white, okay? If they are in this black and white, these black and white colors, it means that they are voiced. If they are in a gray color, so you can see, if I zoom in a little bit better, you might be able to see this you can see these are gray. This indicates on this particular chart that these are voiceless sounds. So what do I mean by voiced and voiceless sounds? If you put your hand on your throat here, you can feel this kind of uh, box, okay, here. <laughs> put your hand here. Now say this sound here. Say this one. <laughs> Say this one. T -t 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 -t. Now, you're not going to feel much vibration. Let's compare it to this one. Hand on your throat. B, 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 b. This one. V, v. And then this one. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> D, 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 d. These ones, you can feel vibration here. So you have, for example, p, 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 b, 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 t, 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 d, d, d. There's vibration with these ones. So that's what it means when you hear teachers say, this is a voiced sound, this is a voiceless sound. And on this chart, I've indicated which sounds are voiceless by coloring them in gray. Now, if you look at the vowels, you'll see that they're all black and white. There are no gray ones. That's because all vowels in English are voiced. There are no voiceless vowels. If you do find a voiceless vowel, then it will more than likely just be a okay? Because if I pronounce these as voiceless, they would sound like You see? And that just sounds like hurry. So that's the chart. Now, we're going to have a look at transcribing some individual words. We're going to do our first piece of transcription. I'm going to load up the pen. Hopefully it will work. <laughs> okay, I have to use Zoom, which is very annoying. All righty. And ensure my pen works. Hello. Fantastic. Everything is working fine. So we have here the word cat. 
Easy peasy word, cat. We have three different sounds. K, a, t. We know that this is a consonant sound. So if we jump back to here, if we look for the k sound, we can see that it's down here in calm, k, k, calm. So we transcribe k. We know that t is just a letter T. And then we're left with the vowel. So we need to think, what kind of vowel is this? If we take a look here, we can see we actually have the example cat, a. Ah. So we're going to transcribe a, ah, cat. Now, when it comes to phonetic transcription, we always put them in these little brackets. So if you're transcribing with phonemes, make sure that you're using brackets cat. As this is also just one syllable, we don't need to indicate where the stress is because the whole world, the whole world, <laughs> the whole word is stressed. So that's our first word, cat. So well done. You have transcribed your very first word. Then we have, I'll put them all here like this, I'll retranscribe cat. Okay. Then we have book. Now notice here we have b, o, k. Although we have two letters, these are not two different sounds. This is still just one sound. We have b, o, k, book, book. The same with this one here. P, l, a, n, t. Here we have five different sounds. So, p, l, a, n, t. Plant. Now, if you're from the north of England, like I am, we would transcribe this. Oops with the cat vowel, yeah, plant. If you look in the dictionary, you will just see this one, as this is considered RP. RP stands for received pronunciation. This is considered the standard British English variety of pronunciation, though only two to 3% of people actually speak with this accent. So it is quite debated whether this should be the standard or not. <laughs> and you can see why, if such a small proportion actually use this. However, we have plant and plant. So you have now transcribed your first three words. Fantastic, well done. Let's now move on a little bit more to two syllable words. So we've learned how to transcribe words with just one syllable. Now let's look at two. This is where we introduce the concept of stress. So again, we're going to transcribe this. We know that this is a way. This is three different sounds. We have two letters, but they are not two sounds. It is a diphthong, yeah, A. So if we transcribe this, a uh, way, a uh, way. Now to indicate the stress, because there are two syllables, we need to add a little boop there. <laughs> And this is what we use to indicate stress. So if we take a word, for example, like happen, of course, let's not forget our brackets. So we have happen. We 
we can indicate that the syllables break with a little dot like this. Now we need to indicate the stress. Happen, happen. It goes on our first syllable. Happen. Same with lucky. We're going to do a little dot to show where the syllable breaks. Lucky. I think in this case, lucky is just with a short one. Lucky. Again, we need to show where the stress is. Lucky. If we didn't put the little mark here to show where the stress is, we wouldn't know where to place the stress. It could be lucky or lucky. We don't know. So we need the little line to show where the stress is. Now let's look at multisyllabic words. <laughs> Getting a little bit harder. So we do exactly the same thing. Split it into syllables. Celebration. Celebration. Then we have the sounds. S -e -l. Uh. B -r -a. So notice this is just one letter, but it's actually the diphthong, A, T, I. It's not T, I. We don't transcribe T, I, but SH. And here, N. Sal. A. Bray. Shun. Celebration. Now, where do we put the stress? Celebration. We're going to put the stress here. So even if we have a very long word, we still need to show where the stress goes. Okay, it's very important if it's a long word. Let's try with neighborhood. Nay, ba, hood. Now this is a tricky one because you've got these ridiculous letters that are there which are pretty much silent. For example, I don't say neighborhood, you know, <laughs> I'm not pronouncing every single letter. So we need to think of this as sound, not letter. We're not transcribing letters, we're transcribing sounds. So let's take the first syllable, nay. Neighbor. Neighborhood. Then I will stress neighborhood. And then our brackets. Neighborhood. So you see, even though we have all of these letters here, <laughs> Don't think of the letters, think of the sound. Impossible. Impossible. Impo impossible. Impossible. Possible. Transcription at first feels impossible, <laughs> but I promise it's not. <laughs> it does get easier with practice. It took me three years to be able to understand transcription fully, so it takes a while. So, impossible. That's how we transcribe that one. The final thing I'd like to have a quick look at. is 
words with what's called a secondary stress. What is a secondary stress? Well, in English, we have a primary and a secondary stress in some words. Your primary stress is the strongest stressed syllable. Your secondary stress is your stressed syllable, but it's slightly less stressed than your primary stress. This happens with long words, especially words which have a prefix. A prefix is a little group of letters that you put at the start of a word in order to change its meaning. For example, national is the root, international. We've added the prefix inter to the beginning of national. So we have pronunciation. <laughs> trying to stress a schwa there. <laughs> Top tip, we never stress a syllable with a schwa. So, notice we have the primary stress here. This is the primary. And this is the secondary. So, in the word, it sounds like pronunciation. Pronunciation. So notice that none is still stressed, but it's not as strong as a pronunciation. Same with classification. Exactly the same. We have the primary stress classification, but we also have the secondary stress classification, classification. Then our example with the prefix inter. Now, if you usually have a prefix at the beginning, um, if you have a prefix at the beginning of a word, it is usually with a secondary stress. So it will be international. So your root word usually has the stress, the primary stress. Very messy, but never mind. <laughs> international. International international. So you can see how we use secondary stress. And that's it. Okay, now let's practice doing a little bit more transcription. If you have any questions so far, please feel free to put them in the chat and I will do my best to try and help you. So we're not going to transcribe all of these. <laughs> we're just going to transcribe a few today because there are many on this document. And if you want access to the transcription documents that I'm going to be using today, you can find them on my Pronunciation Pro course. These transcription documents are not available to the public, okay? Only the chart is available to download for free. Again, without an email address or anything like that. So. Transcribing monothongs. Let's see here. Our first word, we have two sounds. It looks like two letters, because it is two letters, okay? <laughs> but still, this double E is just one sound. S, E, C. It. S it. Sit. Okay. Let's do another one. 
We'll do up to up. End. E n d. End. And luckily, this one's an easy one because <laughs> the transcription symbols are the same as the actual spelling. Cat, we've already done together. K a t. Cat. Up. Up, up, up. Now remember what I said before, when we're transcribing words with just one syllable, we don't need to mark the stress. So I don't need to put the little line to show the stress. It's not necessary. So those are done. Let's have a look at the diphthongs. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and I will go through them after doing the transcription exercises. So the first one we have is vow. V ow. So this time we're thinking diphthongs, right? Remember diphthongs are when we have two vowel sounds in one syllable. In English, every syllable must contain a vowel Okay, every syllable must contain a vowel in English, with some slight exceptions. I will talk about it in a moment. But if we take a look at the diphthongs that we have over here, I'll move it over to the side so you can see. We have two symbols together. So, going back here, we need to transcribe vow. V ow two sounds vow here d ear d ear dear now you might see some transcriptions in the dictionary for british english showing something like this like a little r in the transcription. This means that it's optional. You might hear it, particularly in connected speech. So if you're interested to know more about connected speech, I will link videos for that in the description as well. But we're not going to focus on that in this lesson. So dear, dear. This would be the transcription and the pronunciation in modern RP. So dear. Then hey. A, A, P, U, P, U. Again, two sounds. Poor, poor. Now remember what I mentioned before that some people pronounce this U actually as or, poor. Okay, so if you're studying at university and you're doing transcription for university or something, be, make sure to ask your tutor or your lecturer, your teacher, whoever, what kind of transcription they will accept. Because sometimes teachers don't accept this transcription, okay? They want this one because this is the RP. This is the standard, okay? Though many people out on the streets of England, <laughs> they will say poor. There's something to bear in mind. We'll do one more. Annoy. Two syllables. A. Uh. Noy. So we have two N's here, but we don't say annoy. Uh, it's not a double consonant. Noy. It's still just one. Noy. Annoy. Then what do we need to do when we have a word with two syllables? We stress. We mark the stress. Annoy. Annoy. That's that one. Then we have transcribing words with more syllables. We're just going to practice a few of these. I think I'm just going to do three of these and then I'll take any questions that people have. So we have purple, p 
purple. P, uh, p, o. Okay. So here we actually have two sounds. Purple. So notice I'm not transcribing the R. I don't transcribe purple, purple. That's because I'm not American. <laughs> so we don't pronounce the R. Because we don't pronounce it, we don't transcribe it in modern RP transcription. The same goes for this. Perfect. Perfect. Now this would be the noun, yeah? Perfect, perfect. However, if we wanted to use the verb, perfect, perfect. You need to practice your transcription skills in order to perfect them. So watch out for that. Then the last one we're going to do about mark the stress at the brackets about about so that's the end of this and my nose is super itchy <laughs> i think my allergies are starting to play up but that's that essentially i'm going to switch back to this screen and if you have any questions feel free to put them in the chat right now <laughs> I haven't been reading the chat so I've been very busy teaching because that's what I'm here to do so any questions about this so far the transcription of available available tell you what you can do Tanya let me show you something I want to show you some really, really useful resources when it comes to transcription. So you will never have to ask me ever again. <laughs> I'm going to switch over to the share screen. And I'm going to show you this. So here, what we have is the Cambridge Dictionary. This is the dictionary that I personally prefer but it doesn't matter, okay? You can choose your favorite dictionary. Now your word was available. Was it available or availability? I'm so sorry, I completely forgot. <laughs> my, my memory is terrible. Available, it was available. Now, now you know how to read transcription. Take a look here. Available, available. You can see the transcription here. We can now read the transcription. Notice this little schwa. Okay, notice this. Now you might be thinking, why is there a baby schwa? <laughs> why is there a little baby symbol? That's because it's optional. It's an optional sound. So you can say available, available, or available now remember I told you before that every syllable in English must contain a vowel do you remember that hopefully you do it means you were paying attention <laughs> I'm going to share this here okay what hap I'm trying to find the pen <laughs> what happens when we remove this schwa here. We have a, make that a bit better. Ve, la, bull. But Emma, that syllable now doesn't have a vowel sound. And you told me, Emma, that every syllable must contain a vowel sound. Do you also remember that I said, Every syllable must contain a vowel sound, but there are a few exceptions. If we were to transcribe this to reflect that this has a vowel sound, okay, but we're just removing it here, 
we can put a little line underneath. All right. So this we can do with la, na, and ma. These particular sounds with these symbols are called syllabic consonants. Oof, big word. A syllabic consonant. A syllabic consonant essentially means that the consonant sound is acting and standing as the holder for the syllable. So every syllable must contain a vowel sound, but a syllabic consonant will help hold that position of a syllable without an actual vowel sound being there. So you won't see these in the transcriptions. As well, you won't see sounds like these. But these are sounds that I use quite a lot. Notice that the brackets are also different. That's because these sounds are not phonemes. These are what are called allophones. Allophones. Emma, what on earth is an allophone? <laughs> so when we do transcription, phonetic transcription, usually we use Phonemes. Phonemes are the ones that I taught you earlier. These are phonemes. A phoneme is the most basic representation of a sound. When it comes to transcribing things more specifically and accurately, usually if you're doing a degree in phonetics and phonology or linguistics, you might need to use more specific symbols in order to represent the sounds. So if you're just wanting to do a general transcription of a word, phonemes suffice. Okay, phonemes are fine. But if you want more specific representations of sounds, then you may find that some people use phonemes. So this, for example, if I Transla uh, translate, if I transcribe the word like or love, we'll transcribe love, it would be love. Okay, so we're using the normal phony. Imagine now I want to transcribe the word ball. Ball. I'm not going to transcribe the others in phonemes, I'm just going to transcribe the L. Now, if I want to differentiate the L sound between love and ball, notice that they are different. They're pronounced differently. Love, ball, love, ball. But this, if we want to transcribe this more specifically, we can use the allophone. And this would be the allophone. Another common allophone that you might see is, let me zoom out, <laughs> is this one. And many of you probably know the name of it. This one here. This is the glottal stop. Okay, it's an allophone. I think it's an allophone of T. But if I'm wrong, please correct me. I don't remember. <laughs> it's a long time since I studied specific allophones. But you can see, if I want to transcribe, let's say, bottle, but the person doesn't say bottle, they say bottle, then I can transcribe it as bot or Yeah, so I can be more specific with my transcription by using allophones, which I'm not going to talk about today. <laughs> so that is that. Let me switch back to the big camera. 
Now, any questions regarding transcription today? Yes, it's the dark L. So you have the light L and the dark L. But the dark L, people tend to use the allophone. <laughs> Can you keep the topic? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, that's the glottal stop. And everyone knows the name of the glottal stop, but <laughs> um, not many people know it's an allophone. Some teachers don't even know it's an allophone. They don't even know the difference between phonemes and allophones, and that's okay. What's the symbol for an A sound that's devoiced? Well, you can't get a vowel sound that's devoiced. So there's no symbol as far as I'm aware. You can find the symbols for, for example, if it's a nasalized vowel, let me show you. Here we are. Oh, my nose is driving me crazy. It's so itchy. <laughs> All righty. So here, for example, I'm going to switch this back. So this looks really big and complicated. Don't be scared. Okay. You won't ever need to really use this unless you're a big pronunciation nerd. <laughs> Maybe you're doing a degree in phonetics and phonology or something. So up here, what you've got are all the sounds recorded in the languages that we know to exist, all right? Where you see that it is marked as white but blank, because you can see here, if I just move myself, <laughs> you see some of these are white without any symbols. It means that it's possible to do it, but there are no languages found with that particular sound. So they've just not created a symbol for it. Where you see that it is gray, where you see more, if I move myself again, over here, whee, <laughs> you can see some are gray. This means that it's not possible to make that sound. It is not possible, for example, to do a voiced glottal plosive, okay? <laughs> If you go down here, you can see what are called the diacritics. The diacritics are basically the little symbols that we can add to show certain features of the sound to be more specific. So, for example, if you want to show that a t or d is dental, meaning touching the teeth, then you can use this little diacritic. If you find syllabic down here, which is what we've learned today, you can see we can add it underneath here. So this is very, very specific. It's a little bit more advanced. A lot of you don't need to know this, but it's there if you need it. As well on the other side, you've got information about the primary stress, how to use that, the secondary stress, long, half long, etc. Then it shows some examples. So this is really useful if you're doing a degree in phonetics, otherwise you don't need to bother. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that. So any questions? I've got about five minutes and I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee. It's probably very cold now is my coffee. Yes, the sounds alone are not good enough to improve your accent, exactly. You also need to learn the sounds of connected speech, strong and weak forms, etc. Mm -hmm. You can learn the sounds as much as you want, but you're going to sound quite robotic if you don't know how to connect and how to use stress and intonation. These are what make you sound more human. They add character, they add personality, they add meaning. Is there a glottal D? Nope. Not to my knowledge. <laughs> Where can I find this page? I just Googled the International Phonemic Alphabet and it was on Wikipedia. <laughs> I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you for asking me. <laughs>
Just to thank you, it's my favorite topic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Do I give private lessons on these topics? I used to, but I'm super busy. I'm super busy, so I don't really have the time to go through... Uh, well, to, I was gonna say to go through lessons. <laughs> I don't have the time to uh, teach private lessons. I've been really busy. Anything else? Twitch. Yes, I plan to start on Twitch sometime later uh, this month. I wanted to start this week, but it's been a hellish week. <laughs> Please more about connected speech. Let me know what you want to learn about connected speech and I will do a lesson on it. Where's the huge cup of tea? <laughs> I don't know, actually. I've not seen it for a while. I hope my boyfriend didn't break it and hasn't told me because I love that mug. <laughs> Can you make a video talking natural English? All of my videos are in natural English. Today I'm being a little bit more teachery. I'm articulating a bit more and speaking a lot more slowly than usual, simply because this is quite a basic lesson for people. I want to make this very accessible to as many people. Do you teach literature? No, I hate literature. I hated it when I was in school and I hated it when I um, was doing my A-levels. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> what are we playing on Twitch? <laughs> not today, we're not playing anything. I'm gonna crash after this lesson. <laughs> but I'm not sure actually what we're gonna start playing. Mm, I have quite a few games that we could play. How many are there words connecting rules in English? There are many rules, many different rules, depending on the type of linking that you want to use. I have a full playlist all about connected speech. When this live stream has finished, I'll put it down below in the description and you, you can watch them all until your heart is content. <laughs> shadowing lessons. I have another shadowing lesson coming out next week. So yes. Is it next week or the week after? It's soon. It's soon. It's this month. And it's a collaboration as well. So I'm really excited. I filmed it with another teacher and it was so much fun. <laughs> and I mean that genuinely because you get people who are like, oh my god, it was so good collaborating. But um, no, this was actually really fun. <laughs> Fantastic. No other questions? Uh, perfect as a noun. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it is. It is an adjective. It's not a noun. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. It's an adjective, not a noun. Perfection is the noun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfection is the noun. Yeah. Was I've been focusing so hard on the transcription that I forgot what word class the word was. <laughs> you posted a video about, oh, which is about your experience in Spain. I found it interesting and helpful to learn speaking English. Ah, fantastic. How is Freya? Where is she? She's growing up really fast, Olga. You're right. Let me find her. Freya. Faith, she might be having a nap. Freya, oh, she's coming, she's coming. Hi, baby. You wanna come say hi? Come say hi, baby. Oh, hi, baby. Be good. Come, come on, come on. Come here. Ben, Ben. As soon as I talk to her in Spanish, she comes. <laughs> here she is. Do you wanna sit up? Oi. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> is it hi? Oh, you smell. What have you eaten? <laughs> I don't think she likes the light. <laughs> Can we get a video of homophones and allophones in a bit more detail? They're different things. Homophones are different things to allophones, but I can talk about them more in the future. <laughs> Look how shiny she is. <laughs> Look at this here, this little butt. This is so cute. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to run away. You alright, babes? What's up? 
You want to show your butt to the world. She wants to show her butt to the world. <laughs> How many English words does Freya, or did Freya learn? I think she only understands walk. <laughs> Should we go for a walk? <laughs> she only understands walk. Everything else she understands in Spanish, like comida. You see the ear. A comer. <laughs> Ah, she's so cute. She is the light of my life. 